What do you do for the work? I work as a sales representative. I'm a software engineer. Uh, I'm a pharmacist. I work in finance. <laughs> so being in your position, how much we can make per year or per month? 70k euro. 3,000 euros a month or something. Then being into finance, how do you invest your money? Tesla <laughs> and uh, Apple and I would also invest in crypto. Index fund. In Finland, as we know that uh, they are famous with their education system, is yeah. it true or a myth? Yeah, I would say so. In Finland, education is super important. And do you know that by the industry, who was your high-class client? Yeah, like KKR, for example, Lufthansa. And what's your long-term goal? You want to start your business or you want to continue in a path where you are? I want to live not in the UK. I mean, I actually own a company already. I'm kind of running a export-import trading company. I've been really wanting to start like a gift wrapping company <laughs> why you are focusing on property is that a well paying like a return on investment or why specifically because in Malta property is really popular I mean investing in property is big in Malta Hello guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel again. Today I'm going to interview Gen Z. I know you are enjoying watching this kind of videos and we have also playlists only for Gen Z. Check out if you are interested. We are going to ask them different investment opportunities, how they are investing their money, what business idea they have to start in the future or generally what do they do for a living. Don't forget today's video sponsor is you as always and also Valex property. If you want to purchase your first property or if you want to sell it out, you want to invest for rental investment, your direct guy is here reach out to me i can help you for maltese property market hit the like and subscribe button let's go to interview them so hello your name age and where are you from my name is amy i'm 18 and i'm from malta what do you do for the work i work as a sales representative wow for how long for in this job three months so far because mm -hmm. it's a new store okay but before what you were doing uh insurance Wow. You found only something related to sale, something like uh, presenting your service product, that exactly. kind of jobs. So I used to work with the insurance. I used to work a lot. I had a mm -hmm. job regarding pension plans, mm -hmm. investments. I also worked with just general insurance, which is for cars, you know, houses, mm -hmm. boats, that kind of thing. Okay. Why did you start with this kind of job as a sales rep? Because I like, the, I like um, communicating with customers. Mm -hmm. I also don't mind the hours as well. And in this case, in this shop, because I love the brand that I work in right now. Mm -hmm. oh, that's great. You have to love what you are doing and where you are working. Exactly. I love right. that. I love my job so far. That's great. And being in your position as a sales rep, how much can we make per month? Average maybe around 1,000, 1,100. Mm -hmm. Is that enough for you to live comfortably? I mean, right now, yes. Later on in life, 1,100 is not going to be enough for me. Because mm -hmm. even right now, I'm still struggling. But slowly, slowly, maybe I'll gain a bit more, hopefully. Why? Even you are getting like underpaid, but still you are running and you are still hassling to make more. And you are not giving up. Uh, I don't like to give up because, of course... When you come to work, I kind of come to work with the mind that I want to make money, basically. Mm -hmm. I don't come in the mind, you know, in a bad mindset. I come in a good mindset. I'm like, okay, today is another day. I'm going to wake up. I'm going to make some more money. That's, wow. I try to keep up with that. Amazing, Emmy. But you are 18 year old. Exactly. You are talking about selling. You are talking about mindset. How did you learn this kind of knowledge? Um, I learned because I used to study in insurance mm -hmm. and they they teach us a lot about mindset because when you're selling a product you need to have a positive mindset about it and you need to be positive and sure that your product is working that it works and that it's useful mm -hmm. and also I also think that when you have a positive mindset also things turn around I think when you wake up with a bad mood your entire day is going to be in bad basically just, that's how I like to think about it Okay, that's a nice objection. I need to think about it. <laughs> that's the objection. But how you are preventing the objections? For example, if you are offering a product to the client, but yes. they, are, they are interested, but they are not willing to buy from you. How you are making this process smooth 
to gain their interest and also their trust. So obviously when you're speaking to a client, it's never certain whether they're going to buy or not. Of course, you do your best. Of course, I tell them more about the product, what they need to know, and what I want them to know as well, and the benefits of it. And I think when you're honest about your product, I think that's when you're going to receive a positive outcome about selling it. Great. And any best piece of financial advice you would share with our community who are also in a similar age with you? Save. Save money. And if you're 18 and up, please open a savings account. <laughs> It helps a lot later on. It's going to help you right. for sure. But not. Uh, do you have any investment plan or you are investing your money? What's your strategy? Uh, I went to an insurance company and I opened a savings account. That is the only investment you are doing? So far, of course. And while I'm saving up for property, maybe I'll one day think mm -hmm. about investing in property. Sure, that's great. And you said that you want to buy your own property, when you are planning to do it and how you will do it? The property area right now, it's really expensive. Mm -hmm. So for now, of course, I'm not certain if I will have enough to even start the process. Because right now, of course, you work a lot, but you don't get that much pay. For example, you, with 1,100, I don't have enough you know, to save up to leave, for example, 500 euros mm -hmm. so I can save up for the place. But right now I'm starting slowly, slowly, I'm saving up slowly. So maybe around five years, six years time, maybe I'll have enough to start the process of my own property. I will rent that and then I continue from there. With wow. the rent I save it, I, then I do the same process. Slowly, slowly it will become something for sure. Okay, that's great. But do you know that there are some other options also to make a shortcut, to make more money? Yes. But you are not moving to that part, you yes. are hassling. What? Why? Because, to be honest with you, I'm still learning about the other investments like crypto, you know, those kind of investments. I'm still learning about them. But yes, I, they do interest me. And the, the more I learn about it, the more I'm intrigued to mm -hmm. start it. But not for now. That's great. And you know that Gen Z talking about property and they say that these days are really hard to... They are very hard. But why it is hard for Gen Z to buy their properties? Because let's say that uh, in another countries, the people are in their 20s or early 20s or even like 19, they are already trying to have their own property. But I why in Malta it is really hard for Gen Z? I think because we don't get paid, you know, high because obviously there are some people like me for example I don't have any education mm -hmm. I don't have any like I didn't go to college so that's I think one of the many effects because you of course you need to have certain cert qualifications and certificates in order to get a high paying job so I think that Gen Z now they're learning more about investing crypto so I think that they're kind of not giving a care about their jobs because they're kind of leading, leaning more on to investing. That's what I think. Wow, that's great. So you don't have education, you learn from the hard skills of working for an exactly. insurance company, working from a, uh, any cocktail shop and to exactly. be a sales rep. That's great, we appreciate it. Exactly. And people in your age, if they are going to university rather than going for work and they think that if you have a university degree, you will succeed in the future and the, it is I the mean, shortcut. I mean, they have a better shot at buying a property with, yeah. I mean, with the with education than without it. Without wow. it, you're gonna have to work much harder mm -hmm. than people with education. Why you are focusing on property? Is that a well? paying like a return on investment or why specifically? Because in Malta, property is pretty popular. I mean, mm -hmm. investing in property is big in Malta, you know, property is expensive in Malta. Mm -hmm. So the more you invest in it, of course, Malta's population is getting bigger. Mm -hmm. nice. So there you need to have a good place. Also rent it out, for example, let's say 1000. You have a two bedroom, you rent it out for 1000, 1100 maybe. Those you're already getting like a normal jobs pay, you know? Imagine, for example, you're getting the rent, you're still working a, a full-time job. The rent, you invested. Mm -hmm. You invested once, once maybe doubles by time, then I can invest in more property. And then you can continue the cycle and maybe wow. one day I'll have enough to be on my feet. <laughs> wow. <laughs> She's a property mogul. Hopefully. Future one. Yes. Hopefully, soon. All right. Well, 
it's really good to talk to you. It was very um, nice to talk to you Yes. Too. Another thing, and have you heard about subletting or leasing? So that you don't need to buy your own property and you can rent it out or yes. this kind of things. You never considered it? Exactly. Okay, yes, I've heard about it, mm -hmm. but it doesn't really interest me that much mm -hmm. because it's better for me to have my own property and my own decisions mm -hmm. other than I'm making decisions for other people. Wow, that's great. Thank you very much. Good to talk to you. Hello, your name, age, and where are you from? Uh, Bella, 26, and I'm from Germany. You? I'm Sam, 27, from UK. Hi. So, what do you do for a living? Uh, I work at a. I work in finance. <laughs> Damn cool. <laughs> what do we need it? Hmm? So, people in finance, we needed to find. Ah, I see. Okay. okay. And you? Finance as well. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's great. We need to ask a lot of questions about the finance. Being in your position in the finance industry, mm -hmm. how much can they make per year? So it depends on whether you are doing corporate finance mm -hmm. or investment banking. For example, he's doing investment banking mm -hmm. um, and I'm doing corporate finance in Germany. And as an entry level analyst, if you graduate from a bachelor's or master's, you can earn around um, I would say 70k euro, mm -hmm. yeah. And what is the difference between your two jobs, if people don't know about it, corporate finance or the investment banking? What's the difference between these two? So I have more work-life balance, my working hours are better, so it's more um, 9 to 6 job and he is more stressful, yeah, yeah. he has why longer is, working hours. Why it is stressful? Yeah, in investment banking you generally start around like 7.30 in the morning and sometimes you are expected to finish at like around 10 p.m. Or, or 11 at night. Sometimes mm -hmm. even you have to do all night just when they're, uh, you know, uh, if there is like a primary issue and, uh, yeah, so. Is it because you are also keep tracking the US market that's why you work uh, a lot gen generally speaking most of the large investment bank will have like a different division like a different location wise right so like there will be US office covering the US all hours and then obviously there will be some overlap so you, you, you generally don't need to cover other uh, hours so like for example APAC we have the Singapore hour, um, Singapore um, you know office covering all that mm -hmm. so you don't generally yeah trade uh, in every market, that's more of what I guess hedge funds or uh, private equity would do. They would probably have like position open in all sort of market in the, if they're all based in London. But yeah, in, in, in the investment banking, you kind of just cover your own, I guess, region sort of thing. Yeah. And you, you love what you do or is it because just to have a proper job and then you want to do something else? I went to a, a business school, so every day I either uh, went to, into consulting or into uh, finance. Mm -hmm. and, um, but I have to say that I really like my job um, because I, do, I started with consulting, like I started in a strategy department, then I switched to uh, project finance and um, I really like the atmosphere there and the projects you are doing, they are very interesting and you see like for example um, the airport that um, they are building is um, used with the money from your uh, fin like financial institution. Oh, wow. Yeah, so you see like the results of mm -hmm. your money. Yeah. Okay. And do you know that by the industry who was your high class client? Um, we work with uh, corporates and mm -hmm. private equity um, investors mm -hmm. and um, for example like the really big names yeah like KKR for example or um, Lufthansa like these kind of clients yeah yeah is it mainly airline industry or I work in uh, infrastructure finance, mm -hmm. so it includes like harbors, airports, but also digital infrastructure, for example, fiber networks, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, these kind of digital infrastructure. Right. Yeah. Well, that's great. And being into finance, how do you invest your money? <laughs> well, it's. <laughs> Well, you kind of just want to create a large portfolio consists of all sort of different assets. You're trying to, you know, spread your risk around, but it's quite hard to have your own portfolio uh, while working in the finance industry because of the, uh, I guess, 
the risk involved. You have to kind of get approval because you, you you all have insider information quite easily. And so, you know, in order to you know kind of trade, you, you need the, it just loads of paperwork to it. So normally, what I would do is kind of just go to a broker and ask them to create a portfolio for me, and uh, uh, I'll kind of give them the risk factor there. Uh, so generally, well, especially in, I guess, in this economy, you want to take as much risk as possible. I mean, you can even see all the stocks are pretty much all time high on crypto as well. So it is definitely a good time to invest. And I would pretty much suggest anyone to put like, any savings into like, uh, you don't have to put in one, even just a compound or a, a index fund, it will be still quite beneficial in the short term anyways. Uh, especially after like Trump coming into office now, like we, I think that well, the stock market will be blooming at least uh, at least until January. So we'll see what happens after that. Uh, you have some prediction about January? I think, well, you are able to share, I guess. <laughs> um, I would like, for example, me. I only invest in ETFs mm -hmm. and U.S. stocks, Tesla <laughs> and. Apple, and I think um, I would also invest in crypto. Yeah, oh, that's amazing. Yeah. And we have a lot of younger generation and watching this video. They also want to uh, start for investing, but some of them don't have much money, and but they have some limited knowledge how to invest, where to invest. Can you elaborate a little bit for younger kids if they want to invest? How much money they need to have, or where to start? How much money it? I mean, you, you can start from like a hundred hundred euro, right? Like on onto one thing. It's like if I would say in instead of you know investing investing in one of these large or well uh, one of these um, I guess equity that's already have a large uh, liquidity involved, you should try to go for some uh, you know less known cryptos because you know it's just kind of like a gamble, gambling, really. Yes, it's gambling. kind of like a yeah. get rich quick kind of scene. So I right. will kind of just put like a hundred euros on, on just, you know, some of unknown ones, just hope one of them will just blow up, I yeah. guess. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but if you, if, you, if you do manage to save up, I guess, you know, a couple thousand, you can yeah. start looking at uh, some of the safer options. Like I, I'll, I'm quite bullish on on Bitcoin, even 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 now, like uh, um, I, I think it will still go up even higher. So that's I I would say that's one of the safer uh, choices of, of the investment. But obviously the S and P 500. I mean, I believe no fund has ever outrun the S and P 500 in the long run. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if if you do just put your money in the S and P 500, eventually. Well, hopefully there's not going to be another economic crisis. I then you know it's quite stable returns definitely better than the well fixed interest from from the bank i would uh, say like start with 1000 mm -hmm. and then um, invest in nasdaq or um, s p 500 and then per month you can invest like 200 euro ah. so yeah and then if you are earning more you can invest like 500 800 mm -hmm. yeah but you have to invest like um consistently so mm -hmm. every month you have to put some money inside Okay, and, yeah. that's great. Yeah. And uh, some different question, because you are Gen Z and you are working into finance. Yeah. Do you have any business idea you want to start in the future or you want to continue with this career path? I think um, in our generation, if you really want, if you are ambitious and want to make big money, uh -huh. like you definitely have to start your own uh, business. Mm -hmm. But I think right now we want to, you know, get some experience and then um, get to know the industry, the people, and then let's see. <laughs> All right, that's good. And you? I mean, I actually own a, a company already. I'm kind of running a, well, it's more of like a export import trading company so just kind of a bit like drop shipping but uh, I guess doing the whole process myself instead of relying on another platform taking all the fees really so yeah that's just getting started so hopefully that one day that's gonna work out I guess. Right. So you, you mean it's an online business you have some stores or in uh, Shopify you do it sorry you are doing it on Shopify or you no, have no, no dropshipping? That's what I mean. Like, so it's not exactly dropshipping, but instead of uh, going through one of the platform, I would kind of do the entire operation myself, you mm -hmm. know, like uh, selecting the products in, well, 
uh, from well for, from the importing country and uh, uh, contacting the couriers to you know kind of mail it over and and also have my own warehouse as well in the UK to well so basically the entire chain uh, I have the under mind control instead of going to uh, Shopify which could save a lot of time but then is a very well highly competitive market now on, on drop shipping I don't really recognize well recommend anyone to go into that business as, as right now because you probably make more money selling courses on how to drop ship than actually doing the drop ship I mean, that's exactly probably what you see online now everywhere you see uh, everyone selling courses about drop ship that should kind of tell you that this <laughs> How, how competitive this market is. That's great. And at the end, people in their teenage, and let's say that they are 18, 19 years old, what personal development advice and financial advice you would give to them? Besides like invest or save 20% of your income, 30% of your salary, this kind of thing. Besides this, my first thought was start early. Mm -hmm. Like um, because if you are um, if you start with one thousand euro right now, then in a few years it compounds, mm -hmm. so it has a great um, effect. I also have multiple income streams if mm -hmm. possible. Like, and then if they start, for example, studying in the university, they can also like um, do some side hustles <laughs> yeah. and just start early with everything and don't be afraid of any failures. Or if you, if people tell you this is not gonna work, then just um, still go for it, and you can make some um, very, um, I don't know, like experience, good experience, you know people, and it's just gonna benefit you. Even though maybe your startup idea wouldn't work out, but still, it's a great way of learning. Right. You have an addition? I think it's just networking. Networking is really it does beat anything, especially if you're working. Uh, I would say 95% of how you progress is going to be networking. It has literally nothing to do with how good of a job you do, uh, especially on the climb the corporate ladder. Uh, or even, uh, you know, start your own business. It's all about networking. Once you have the connections and the, uh, well, I guess the resource, then it's just a lot easier from there. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Yeah, you have to, if you are starting like a, a internship, mm -hmm. then don't be afraid to reach out to the department heads, even though if you don't know them, mm -hmm. and just make yourself like um, known in a good way, of course, not to being too, you know, um, like, um, don't be too no oh, annoying, yeah. but still like uh, just reach out to people and then tell them what you want. Like, uh, if you want to have, a, for example, an internship in this and this area afterwards, just let them people know. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, if they have like a position, they'll think of you immediately. So yeah, wow. then working is like really the most important thing that you learn in a, in a business school, for example. Wow. That's great. Yeah. And you want to say that your network is your net worth. Yes. And then you, you need to be like a likable person and, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like, don't be too pushy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. Well, thank you very much. Good luck on your career. How are your name, age, and where are you from? Hi, I'm uh, Zach Anthony. I'm 25, and we're from Japan. Yes. I'm a Yahoo, and I'm, I'm also from Japan. Hi, what do you do for a living? I'm a software engineer. Who are you? I'm doing sales. What do you mean doing sales? In which industry? Which industry? A uh, kind of automotive industry. Wow. You yeah. both work in Japan, or? Yes. Uh, what do you do here in Malta? Uh, we're actually on our honeymoon. Wow! So, yeah, we you got married. Did. Yes, oh, yes, that's we just nice. Did. Yes. So congratulations, Thank happy marriage. Thank you. So and how long you have been together? Then you decided to get married. Three years, and mm. then we decided, and then we got married at about four years into our relationship. Mm. So yeah, how it happened? Like you thought that this is a click. So this is my soulmate. Oh, uh, we were actually in the same university, mm -hmm. and then we met there as a friend. Yeah, you know. We started getting along and then kind of got into a relationship and then somehow got married. <laughs> ah, let's talk about your career. So being in your position in Japan, how much we can make per year or per month? Oh, that's hard. Um, I actually don't know how much I make in a year in euros. Or in your currency. currency. 50 million they make per year. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> 5, million, five, million. 5 million, sorry. 5, five million. million. And what is your currency? Jap Japan, Japanese yen. Okay, yeah. Japanese yen. Uh, how you are investing your money? Obviously, right now we're using it on travel money. So, mm -hmm. but um, you know, we use it on. We also do stocks and travel. Travel. Mm -hmm. 
She's managing the money. Yeah, she, yeah, she okay. takes care of all the money. I, I think no I, have to, I have yeah. to switch to that side. <laughs> but living in Japan, and is it enough, your salary, or how you are living in your comfort zone, or you still have some side hustle to do with just to cover up some expenses? Um, to be honest, since we're both working, really, really mm-hmm. don't have that much trouble with making our living for the day. It, you know, it would be always nice to have a little more to mm-hmm. make to have more luxury in life, yeah. I would say, yeah. That's great. And when did you start for investing in a stock? E, two years ago, maybe. Mm-hmm. And how did you decide for investing in a stock? Where did you learn it? Oh, on the internet. I mean, mm-hmm. it's not really, there's not really much people, you know, there to explain it, in, you know, and locally. So you're going to have to find. That makes sense. Um, for people in their early 20s as well, mm-hmm. if they are thinking about investments, what advice would you give to them? I know there's a lot of information, you know, out there and once you look at the vast variety of information and you have no idea anything financially, you know, knowledge of finance and whatnot, um, it's really hard to uh, to try to figure out which is the right and which is the wrong. Mm-hmm. So I would say, you know, just kind of try it small amounts, but, you know, kind of give it a feel, a test to it, and then kind of figure out what you're comfortable with because there's no right answer, you know. So, you know, kind of figure out what you're comfortable with and how much amount that you want to invest into whatever you're trying to do and just kind of test out the waters, feel it, you know, give it mm-hmm. a little poke at it first and then kind of build up from that. Wow, that's good. Do you have any business idea to start in the future? I uh, haven't got that far yet. I was just conti- uh, I was just focused on the marriage part. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to figure out our future for, from here out together now. Okay. So, yeah. Who proposed first? Oh, that would be me. You? Yeah. <laughs> okay. in, in Japan, is it normal the woman to propose to a man or no? I think it's typical that the man proposes to the woman, but mm-hmm. lately, especially, you know, in the generations now, you could say it, it goes both ways. Ah, that's great. And another question, uh, because we have no idea about Japan, mm-hmm. like yeah. how it is for like a fresh married people, is it giving you any subsidiaries or is it giving you some flexibilities with the working condition as well? Yeah, especially for both of our companies that we work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've taken a great uh, number of, not a great number of vacation, but a long period of vacation period, mm-hmm. which our company was flexible for it. And they give us, um, they've helped us, you know, try to rearrange our marriage. Mm-hmm. That's great. Thank you very much for sharing your Thank experience you and good luck on your honeymoon and Thank marriage you. as well. Thank, Thank you. you. It was much. good. Hello, your name, Aish, and where are you from? I'm Maya. I'm from Finland and I'm 20. What do you do for a living? I work for a language travel company. Mm-hmm. And what's your position there? I do the loyalty program management. Mm-hmm. And being in your position, how much can we make per month? This is just a side job now. I'm going to want to grow in the uh, company, so I really want to go and start my sales journey there. And there, I think the payment is like 3,000 euros a month or something. Right. Like starting, starting. Starting, yeah. yeah. But at the moment, what range you are? Now it's very little because my hours are very small. I'm only getting like 500 euros a month. 500 yes, euro I'm, per month? Yes, I'm still studying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But how do you manage your money in Malta? Uh, I'm actually here just for three weeks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you are going back to Finland? Yes. So, you will not come back again? No. Okay. But do you have any business idea to start in the future? I come up with many uh, all the time, but I never like uh, come up with any like uh, that I would actually start. But I'd be really wanting to start like a gift wrapping company because <laughs> wow. I love to wrap gifts. Mm-hmm. So uh, I would love to, you know, like Christmas is coming, stuff like this. And I would love to like wrap the Christmas gifts of others. They could bring all the gifts and I could wrap them. Right. I would love it. But why only Christmas, not other days? Let's say that different holidays or Easter or maybe just Valentine's Day or even for the birthday. Yeah, I totally could do it, but I haven't really uh, thought about it too much. It's just like my passion. So if I could like start growing it and maybe do a business out of it, I would love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What stops you not for starting? I think because I'm still studying, so I have to get my studies done first. Is it important to have a university degree? No, no, but I just want to have my full time in it if I start doing it, basically. Uh, but maybe I could start uh, on like a side job or something. 
Why maybe? Just do it. Yeah, maybe I'm a bit scared because always maybe like... Maybe I'm a bit lazy. <laughs> maybe that too. <laughs> but it's always scary to start something and with money and everything. Okay. How you are good at with money? I would say I'm pretty good. I got a good like uh, uh, education from home. So they really told me about how to use money and uh, I think I'm in a good position in life uh, if we think about that. So, in Finland, as we know that uh, they are famous with their education system, is yes. it true or a myth? Uh, yeah, I would say we have pretty good education system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What you don't learn from university, from school or like a education system in Finland, what you are lacking of? I would say that they don't really teach you anything about money. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't really teach you anything about it and it's really difficult to know like I would really love to know about like stocks and stuff mm -hmm. it would be super interesting but I just don't know anything and it's a bit difficult to start now so uh, maybe I'm also a bit lazy with that <laughs> yeah. well people in your age if they want to move abroad or to start their new life in Malta what advice you would give to them I would just uh, maybe I I don't do this myself, but I would say that never, never say no, like always, always do it. If you get a chance to do something, always do it, because I've got many chances to go abroad and I don't think I have ever said no, like it gives you so much to go abroad, I, I would say, so yeah. That's great, thank you very much for stopping by and <laughs> giving us an interview. Yeah. All right, hello, your name, age, and where are you from? Uh, I'm uh, 29, from Norway. From Norway? Yeah. Okay, and you? Uh, Isaac, 23, from the UK. Right. What do you do for a living? Uh, I'm a pharmacist. Pharmacist? Yeah, yeah. Wow, for how long? Uh, since 2021. And you? Um, I'm an accountant. So That's great. Also, you are good at money? Uh, no, I spend too much of it. So. <laughs> but it means you are good at spending. Yeah, well, well, yes, well. Uh, he's got a better talent than that. Oh. Me, yeah. Okay, and being in your position as a pharmacist in Norway, how much can we make per year or per month? That's depend on where you work. If you work in a pharmacy, you you make a decent amount. Mm -hmm. But if you work in the privatized uh, sector, you make a bit more. Why? So you work in private or in a pharmacy? Well, I'm in I'm between. I'm like I'm a mix of between okay. of that. And in your position. Um, depends again. If if you're junior, you don't make that much because there's so many people. Let's be you, direct. You, you, or I, just, I couldn't possibly say. You know, well, um, give us a range. Range, thirty to forty thousand euros. Right. Well, that's also a decent amount of money yeah. for your early twenties. Yeah, yeah. So. I'm yeah. happy. That's great. And how do you invest your money? Uh, index fund. Index funds. That's it. And holidays. And holidays. Is it investment for holidays? Uh, no, it's just savings. That's it. Holiday is just... It's kind of an investment though. Yeah. Because you enjoy it, you know. Yeah. Um, I don't regret wasting well, wasting that money. It's not, it's, not, it's not a waste, so... Okay, so you are saying spending or investing for a holiday and also wasting, you say. Which one would take? It's not a waste. It's not a waste. Mm -hmm. Never but was. We're friends because of a holiday. Yeah. So. Okay. But yeah. what are you learning as spending money on a holiday? Um, to enjoy yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Make life easier for you. <laughs> right. And what's your long-term goal? You want to start your business or you want to continue in a path where you are? Oh, I just want to do what I do now. Mm -hmm. Chill. That's it. I don't want to start anything. Too much work. <laughs> Too much work. <laughs> Too much work. <laughs> oh, right. You. You can always work um, I want to live not in the UK. I want to move to Australia. So why? Why? Uh, weather's a lot better than the UK. People are happier. Mm -hmm. Don't judge as much. Just you can do what you want. So Fine. that's a good point. And people see that in Norway, like foreigners who are going there, and they are having a decent lifestyle and also getting high-paid job, comparing their own country. But at the same time, the depression level is considerably like higher. What do you think about it? That's why I'm here. <laughs> well, but you are here for a holiday short time. Yeah, so that's why okay. <laughs> you, you work and then you leave somewhere warmer a bit. More sun. Yeah, more sun. Uh, is it true though? Yeah, it's really dark down. Okay. Like where we are now, it's like, it's winter. Mm -hmm. So it's like the sunset too. <laughs> so right. it's, it's getting dark at two. Here yeah. you, you get the sun to like six or seven, right? Wow. So the sun does a lot to you though. 
So nothing different than Canada because I came from Canada yeah, as well. Yeah. And it's yeah, pretty it's much the same. So, and uh, let's say that people want to go to Norway. What advice you would give to them to now in advance? If you like a quiet life, mm -hmm. but you live in a wealthy country, that's that kind of what Norway is. You, it's not always busy. If you if you value private life, uh, that's uh, one of the country that's really nice for uh, your own time and stuff. Um, All right. Valid points, and from you, I have to ask about investment advice and also saving, spending, or splurging advice. Yeah. And the best piece of financial advice you would give to us? Put aside a little bit of money each month. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. I, it does end up getting spent on holidays, but yeah, I don't regret it. But always just make like at the start of the month, I always just send a little bit to a different bank account. Just don't look at it, and then you've always got something on the side. And you said that you are investing for index funds, and is it doing well, or how is it? Uh, yes, I, I don't see the numbers. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't look at it, I just set the money aside, and then mm -hmm. when it's grow, it grows. Makes sense. Well, thank you very much for stopping by and giving us an interview. No it was good to talk no to you. Well, that's it basically. I'm definitely sure you enjoyed with this episode, and I really enjoy talking with Gen Z because they have different strategy, and you heard how great they have mindset. Of course, today's video is sponsored as you always and Valex property. If you want to purchase your first property in Malta, you have direct contact. So don't forget, hit the like and subscribe button. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.